Western Cuyahoga Audubon Society success stories. This is a presentation by collaborators Jess Bibbo, Michelle Brosius, Gloria Ferris, and Betsy O'Hagan, all members of the Western Cuyahoga Audubon Society, a chapter of National Audubon Society, and based in the Greater Cleveland, Ohio area. WCAS Success Stories is featured at the Council of Ohio Audubon Chapters meeting on Saturday, April 4, 2020 by presenters Jess, Michelle, and Gloria. The live presentation script is narrated here by Betsy O'Hagan. Jess Bibbo, WCAS member and grant committee volunteer, talks about the history of the chapter. Jess said that she joined WCAS in the fall of 2019 and is now working in the grant committee. Jess presents a brief history of the organization and outlines how the chapter continues to build communities around birding and conservation. Western Cuyahoga Audubon Society began on August 15, 1975 when a group of concerned citizens held a meeting at a house in Berea, Ohio. That same month, the first newsletter was published, and the next month, the first membership meeting was held at a local elementary school. The logo that you see at the top right of your screen featured a peregrine falcon because at the time of the chapter's beginning, peregrines were endangered in Ohio. They were reintroduced in the state and were just beginning to take hold in cities like Cleveland. The logo was designed in February. In October of 1976, the chapter received its charter from the National Audubon Society. The organization has a long history of stewardship of Northeast Ohio bird populations, citizen science research activity, spearheading regional organizational collaborations, and convening public outreach and education programs and events. Early on, members advocated for policies that protected the environment, such as when former President Jim Hamilton and the conservation chair John Edwards presented testimony to U.S. Congressman John Eckert on behalf of the Clean Air Act in 1982. The organization has partnered with cities such as Parma and Cleveland, worked with local government officials, as well as the Army Corps of Engineers to create and maintain public areas such as walking trails and wildlife habitats. In 1984, what is now the Rocky River Nature Center became home to WCAS and a little bit about the Rocky River Important Bird Area, a five-year bird monitoring project conducted in partnership with the Cleveland Metro Parks. Stan Ciros, a former WCAS board member, has this to say about the Rocky River Important Bird Area. The Rocky River Important Bird Area Survey, which we conducted from 2006 through 2010, was the most important conservation initiative WCIS could undertake. This project was identifying not only what birds were there, but what birds were not there. This project was really more about people than birds because it studied the impact of conservation on the quality of life of people who live in the Rocky River watershed. This led to the organization being presented with the 2009 Northeast Ohio Environmental Award. Western Cuyahoga Audubon Society won this award in the community category by making the transition from serving as a local chapter of the National Audubon Society to becoming one of the most active citizen-based environmental groups in Northeastern Ohio and a model program for other Audubon chapters. The award honored the expansion of programming, which began with public education programs to biological surveys 
and the adoption of an important bird area in the Rocky River watershed, as well as the volunteering and partnership the organization had done with the Cleveland Metro Parks Department of Planning, Design, and Natural Resources in assisting in describing avian communities in three Cleveland Metro Parks reservations. WCAS was early in recognizing the importance of establishing online communities. The website was launched in 1999, and in 2007, it was a focus of the chapter's strategic plan. Then, in 2016, WCIS board members voted to upgrade the website to bring all chapter operations online to grow the Audubon mission. The website now serves not only as a hub for the organization, but also as a community resource featuring birding hotspots for members of the public interested in birding. The website has become a way to facilitate new members who can easily find information on how to volunteer and other ways to become involved, two of which you will learn more about shortly. Just Bibbo speaking to you today is a testament to the power of engagement through the internet. The website was how she first found the organization and greatly appreciated not only, not only how easy the site is to navigate and its visual appeal, but the fact that it is fully accessible to the public. You do not need to be a member to access information. Western Cuyahoga Audubon Society Success Stories Second Section, Urban Birding Cleveland by Michelle Brosius, Board Member and Birdwalk Coordinator. What is urban birding? David Lindo, also known as the urban birder who wrote the book How to Be an Urban Birder, defines his urban birding message as this. We all need to appreciate that wildlife not only occurs in our cities, but it is here to stay. There is fabulous wildlife all around us, and we need to encourage and conserve it in the places where it exists. David Lindo visited Northeast Ohio in November of 2019, and he also told us that if you can see any bit of a building in your surroundings, then you are urban birding. Why does urban birding matter? Cuyahoga County is just under 20% forest and, in fact, is home to the second largest city in Ohio, Cleveland. This presents a great opportunity for urban birding, and for many people, this opportunity can be found right outside their front door, workplace, or school. You don't have to travel far to connect with nature, and nature needs us now more than ever before. Urban birding activities raise resident and visitor awareness of bird and habitat conservation. Last November, David Lindo visited the Cleveland area as the guest of the Western Cuyahoga Audubon Society for a week of events and activities, which consisted of many bird walks in various urban settings in Northeast Ohio, such as the Cleveland Metro Park's Rocky River Reservation, the Scranton Flats and Rivergate Park, the Cleveland Lakefront, and many more. We also had a chapter fundraiser, a How to Be an Urban Birder presentation with David Lindo, and other events in which David shared his enthusiasm for urban birding with over 600 attendees, chapter members, youth birders, and volunteers. In fact, the crowds drawn in the first weekend of chilly November can only be matched by spring migration. We didn't have a diversity of warblers to offer, but we attracted a diversity of people to our various events. During this week, we engaged with not only our valued Audubon chapter members, but also with youth birders and naturalists, including the children of the Bur Boys and Girls Club of Cleveland, East Clark Middle School Bird Nerds, and Ohio Young Birders Club. Michelle had the pleasure of volunteering for the event with the Boys and Girls Club of Cleveland 
in which they took the children to the Morgana Bluffs Nature Preserve adjacent to their facility in Slavic Village. The children were extremely excited to have an opportunity to go outdoors and explore the preserve. This week-long event served as our Urban Birding Cleveland kickoff, as it was always intended to be an ongoing movement. Western Cuyahoga Audubon Society has launched Urban Birding Cleveland to connect people of all walks of life to the birds in their communities, with the purpose of raising awareness about local wildlife and the importance of conserving and growing habitat for our resident and migratory birds. The goal of Urban Birding Cleveland is to increase the diversity and number of guardians of nature in Cleveland. During the Urban Birding with David Lindo week, volunteers with a passion for urban birding and connecting people to nature met at the LGBT Community Center of Greater Cleveland to discuss how Western Cuyahoga Audubon Society could have an impact in Cleveland and the surrounding communities. The event consisted of a professionally facilitative intensive design and planning session to draft model solutions to raise public awareness of urban birds, wildlife, and forest habitat. The energy of the group was uplifting and many great stories and thoughts were shared and explored. The work group brainstormed what an urban birding trail could look like and how to create the route. Suggestions included locate local hotspots featuring trees, green space, and houses with bird feeders, and ask homeowners for permission to use their yards as stops on the urban birding trout. This work is continued at the monthly Conservation Project Lab meetings and also with the help of an urban birding route committee. We are thrilled that one partner in particular, Tremont West Development Corporation, is interested in continuing dialogue with us to incorporate urban birding into their Tremont Neighborhood Development Plan. Board member Tom Romito has been engaged with the Tremont community, meeting with the various districts, and is planning a neighborhood bird walk with residents to explore the urban landscape its mature and new forest canopy, birds, and wildlife in historic Tremont, Ohio. Western Cuyahoga Audubon Society Success Stories, the third section, Conservation Project Lab, presented by Gloria Ferris, board member. Why a conservation lab? One challenge WCAS faces is sustainability, as do other chapters of the National Audubon Society. We felt National Audubon Society's goal of fostering equity, diversity, and inclusivity dovetailed with our goal of creating a younger, more diverse chapter which would build capacity and sustainability. One thing we do know about younger people is they do not like to attend meetings. They like to do. So we felt creating an atmosphere of embracing new ideas, allowing people to own those ideas and run with them, might be a better way to attract new people and gain members. Young people like to be sociable, don't we all? But they do not like sitting, listening to someone talk. Our labs are based on new idea sharing, planning, and taking action. How did we form our lab? Well, once the group leader was chosen, we worked out the logistics. Our community builder and organizer, and along with the rest of us, invited friends, members, and especially sent out an invitation to inquiring minds on our email list and the general public through Facebook, Twitter, and the WCAS website. Tom Romito, a board member, served as our facilitator. We have and had four objectives. Number one, raise awareness to increase membership. Number two, use bird habitat conservation to reach a more eclectic and diverse group of people. Three, to fundraise. And four, most certainly to have fun. We scheduled our second meeting. 
Our second meeting focused on choosing a project that would build on the bird walks, field trips, and speakers programs that our chapter already hosted. After much discussion on how we could accomplish that and what we could do, we decided to focus our efforts on native plant sales. We are glad to be promoting COEX Native Plants for Birds initiative through our plant sales. Native plants and shrubs are more nutritious for birds than their normal urban diet of french fries and bread. In the beginning, we decided to plan one sale in May at the Frostville Museum. We then went to our board to secure a starting budget for the first sale. With a modest budget, we held the sale. Shortly after, we had an after-action report at the next conservation lab. It turned out we accomplished our goal. It was sustainable. We returned the opening budget to the Treasury and had a modest profit that could fund a second plant sale in the fall. First, we needed to poll the volunteers at the lab and the rest of the committee on whether to continue this project. The answer was an overwhelming yes. That second sale was the Tremont Arts and Cultural Festival, where we not only met our selling goal, but we were able to raise awareness about WCIS to many interested people. We added quite a few people to our mailing list and gained a few more new members. That second sale was a fun, successful event. So successful that our native plant subcommittee, led by Karu Tsuboni, has scheduled six venues for our sales in 2020. We are hoping that the COVID-19 is controlled by May and we can, be get, we can begin. Check our website for days and times when we can again enjoy public places. We also intend to engage boys and girls clubs, and schools in planting and maintaining native plant demonstration gardens to show the importance of green space in urban areas for mental, physical, and spiritual health. We will start with one. Our second project came a bit quickly. We didn't plan for it the way we did our first project. We hit the ground running. Betsy O'Hagan, our community builder and organizer, has many regional, national, and international contacts through social media. David Lindo, the urban birder from the UK, is one of those friends and colleagues. He expressed an interest in coming to Cleveland for a visit in early November. Betsy brought this to the conservation lab in August. It meant we had 90 days to plan, develop, and launch our event. This bigger project ultimately helped us to connect to 45 sponsors and individual donors to help defray costs for the week. Partners that provided venues and hosted events where David spoke and interacted with Cleveland's youth during his stay. Caterers, a local Airbnb, and many others who helped us make it an enjoyable week for everyone. We had 50-plus volunteers who were the lifeblood of the week. Our bird walk leaders volunteered their time. We had a supply of volunteers who made every single event smooth sailing. We did it. We once again used the chapter treasury for the few pre-event expenses we needed to purchase, but in the end, the week was sustainable, returning funds used to the club. The remaining funds from sponsorships and fundraising have been used to launch the Urban Birding Cleveland Initiative that Michelle spoke about earlier. Before we begin to talk about where to start, I think it is important to give a little background on how Michelle and Jess became integral members of WCAS. Michelle began as a birder wanting to learn more. She began volunteering at the bird walks. She then became a board member who became one of the drivers planning the David Linda Week. She gave us a younger perspective about what a young person and her family would want in that week. She is a valuable asset to our chapter. Just Bibbo saw David Linda Week posts on Facebook and became interested in the bird walk events. 
I'm not sure she was able to attend many of them, but that week intrigued her enough to come to a conservation lab where Gloria talked about the grant writing committee and asked interested people to join. Jess is now a member of WCAS and also a valued member of the grant writing committee. Her professional background is in nonprofit grant writing, and she is a wonderful addition to our chapter. Start slow to go fast is a favorite phrase of mine. At first, I had no idea what was meant, but over the years, I followed this advice, and it is true. Planning is the key. Planning is the key to executing the action that will cause change. I know you have all heard the phrase, think big, start small. Well, that is the beauty of conservation labs. One person or 30 people can start a lab. It just takes an idea. If you are one person, I suggest you finding at least two other people who share your passion for the same idea. It's always easier working together. Just so you know, I would suggest that a week-long series of events focused around a celebrity birder can be done in 90 days, but six months or longer to plan is a much better time frame. The first year of Urban Birding Cleveland now is mapped, planned, and we are starting to execute our next event. Over the past year and a half, we have had 200 attendees at our conservation labs, We usually have 10 to 20 at the monthly meeting. The faces of those who may attend may change month to month, but we always have a staunch crew of volunteers guiding and driving subcommittees throughout the month. Remember, you may start out with a small core, but the goal is to bake a bigger pie or to raise like bread doubling or quadrupling your efforts. If you have any questions, please send them to info at wcaudubon.org or please feel free to contact any of the presenters of this presentation. In addition, we hope you'll visit the Western Cuyahoga Audubon Society website at www.wcaudubon.org to check out news, event notices and announcements, and the educational digital resources that are available there. Thank you.